This review for the general psychology class is based upon things that students say they needed most to study and things that uh, I think students need uh, to study. Everything here in terms of page numbers is based upon the textbook, the sixth edition, which can be downloaded and viewed for free at the Berkeley Electronic Press. In Unit 1, the students said they needed more information about the role of data and theory. Well, a theory is an abstract concept used to understand the data and to explain and control what we are working with. Data plus theory equals scientific knowledge. What I think students need to focus on in Unit 1 is more information about the founders, the great pioneers of psychology. Look at the chart on page 12 and focus on those that we've spent a lot of time talking about, such as Wilhelm Wundt, who gave us the first psychology laboratory. In Unit 2, students want to learn more about predictor and criterion variables. That's covered on page 18 of the book, and many examples are given there. What I think students need to know about Unit 2 is the definition of an experiment, research in which an independent variable is intentionally manipulated by the investigator. It is experiments that are the best technique for inferring a cause and effect relationship. In Unit 3, students want to learn more about spurious correlations and the post hoc fallacy. A spurious correlation is when we have two collateral effects. Neither one caused the other. A spurious correlation can be strong and statistically significant. It just doesn't show that one variable caused the other. What I think students need to know from Unit 3 is that correlations must be tested with the null hypothesis probability. In other words, when p is less than 0 0.05, the null hypothesis may be rejected. The results are significant. In Unit 4, students want to know more about parts of a, a neuron and parts of the brain. The parts of the neuron are discussed on page 54, beginning with dendrites, the long skinny axon over which the impulse is conducted, and then ending in the terminal fibers. The parts of the brain are given in a large table, of which you see only a part, on page 64. In Unit 5, students want to know more about Weber's Law. That says that a person's ability to distinguish between two stimuli is determined not by the absolute difference in the intensities of those stimuli but by relative proportionate difference in their intensities. Now, Weber's constant is a number that he came up with for a given sensory modality that tells us how much of a proportionate difference between two stimuli will be just noticeable by the subject. What I think is important from Unit 5 is the different kinds of psychic phenomena. You have to know the difference between telepathy, clairvoyance, and precognition. In Unit 6, students want to know more about schedules of reinforcement, such as gambling. That's discussed on pages 107 to 112 and summarized in this table showing the different kinds of schedules of reinforcement. Gambling is a variable ratio schedule of reinforcement, extremely resistant to extinction. What I think students need to learn in this particular chapter is the difference between non-reinforcement, negative reinforcement, and punishment. That's summarized on these pages, especially in this table. In Unit 7, students want to know more about stages of memory. Memory starts with a sensory stage lasting only seconds and is then encoded into short-term, which is then processed into long-term or semi-permanent memory. The other thing students have to learn and remember from this chapter is the different 
types that memory is measured. Remember that recognition has the best overall retention. In Unit 8, students want to know more about convergent and divergent problem solving. Well, creativity is divergent problem solving. Convergent problem solving is when there is only one possible answer, like on most IQ tests. It is the divergent problem solving that means that several solutions are possible. What I think is most important in Unit 8 is intelligence and intelligence testing. Remember, intelligence is defined as a generic aptitude for cognitive learning. Tests for intelligence, like Wechsler and Stanford Binet, have a mean of 100. IQ tests, such as these, are very reliable, but not necessarily valid. In Unit 9, students want to learn more about the um, theories of emotion offered by Schachter and James and Lang. The James Lang theory says that behavior in the form of physiological arousal is the cause producing emotions. Schachter's cognitive labeling theory says that we have an interaction of biochemical arousal, environmental stimuli, and then beliefs and expectations. These interact to produce emotion. What I think is most important from Unit 9 is the difference between affect and cognition summarized in this table on page 167. In Unit 10, students want to know more about the humanistic theories of personality. These assume that people are essentially good, capable of free will and love. Humanistic theorists include Adler, Jung, Maslow, Alport, and Rogers. I also think it's important for students to remember the different types, such as Hippocrates, Sanguine, choleric, melancholic, phlegmatic, Friedman's type A, and the whole idea of introverts and extroverts. The different types of psychological tests are summarized on page 216. And you can see the different types of uh, personality tests, such as the Rorschach, which is um, very projective, not necessarily very valid or reliable. In Unit 11, students want to know more about ETC, electroconvulsive therapy. Well, this is shock treatment for severe depression. What I think they also need to know about is not a, uh, that schizophrenia is not a split personality, but it's defined by symptoms of delusions and hallucinations. Unit 12, students want to know more about Piaget. Well, here is a summary of the different theories of uh, personality. The most important thing to remember about Piaget is that he has a cognitive theory of mental problem-solving development in children. The thing to remember about Erickson is that his theory is essentially psychoanalytic. Harlow and Lorenz focused on motherless animals. Lorenz looked at motherless uh, ducks and looked at imprinting in those ducks. Harlow looked at uh, motherless monkeys and uh, how they have a critical period for developing nurturing and social skills. So Harlow and Lorenz. Lorenz is more of an ethologist working in natural environment, whereas Harlow worked in a laboratory situation. They both worked with motherless babies and noted the importance of critical periods. Unit 13 focused on uh, many things. Students want to know about, more about Zimbardo. He was the one who gave us the Stanford Prison Experiment in which uh, normal students were assigned to the roles of guard or prisoner. Zimbardo concluded that institutional norms corrupt the individual. The rotten barrel spoils the uh, apple. What I think is most important in Unit 13 is Festinger's theory of cognitive dissonance. People will change what they believe in order to match what they do. Unit 14 talks about applied psychology. Students want to know more about Holland's code. That's summarized on page 325. And 
this particular diagram. Theory Y and Theory X are different theories of how management should take place. Theory Y says that workers are essentially good people. They just need to be treated dis uh, decently. This was the theory of humanistic theorists such as Abraham Maslow. Good luck on 